Throughout the last year, Intrepid has shown us phenomenal progress with Ashes of Creation, giving us the Node Showcase, Freehold Showcase, giving us multiple class archetypes, story arcs, all sorts of things that are really tying this game together, finally leading us towards Alpha 2. But the biggest showcase yet to come, I believe, is going to be this month in the November Developers Update, where we are going to get the Artisan system functioning in the game, along with an announcement that gives us a quarter of when to expect Alpha 2. I know it's not the exact date, but Intrepid giving us a rough three-month time frame of when we can expect Alpha 2 in 2024 is going to be absolutely huge, because there's at that point, there's no more waiting, there's no more guessing. We will know it's going to be in summer of 2024, it's going to be in fall, it's going to be early next year. We will know when we can jump into the world of Vera. And from then on, anyone who has Alpha 2 access will be able to play Ashes of Creation and test it until launch, basically, because it's going to be a persistent test. There will definitely be downtime and wipes and things like that, but from when Alpha 2 launches, Alpha 2 is said to be live through Beta 1, through Beta 2, and finally through launch, where it will become the PTR test server for the game. Which is absolutely huge, because for all of us that have been waiting for years, it's finally coming together and we're finally gonna have our hands on it next year so it's pretty cool beyond that though artisanship is going to be one of the biggest streams they can showcase i know we've said this before about the nodes we said this before about crafting and honestly surprisingly enough the caravan stream in my opinion has been one of the best ones so far this year over the nodes and everything else crafting is one of those things that you either love it or you hate it. Going around gathering materials and building up your armor and your weapons and all that, it's a, it can be a fun thing. It can be satisfying, it show, gives you a sense of progression. And in Ashes of Creation, it's going to be key to the economy because most of the end game gear you get is going to be something that players can craft. Because what makes Ashes of Creation stand out a bit is you're not gonna have your typical gear drops in a sense from end game raid bosses. They're gonna drop rare materials and resources and patterns to create these end game weapons and these end game armors and these materials are really going to be what bolsters the economy because you can then sell it to other players you can make your own stuff you could become that master crafter of the server or of your guild and it's going to have a huge impact on the game and beyond that though the artisanship trees are extensive from what we've heard i don't know what to what extent we're going to see them this month you obviously have the artisan trees broken up into your main gathering processing and crafting Gathering has you go in and gathering materials throughout the world. Processing has you processing those raw resources into fine materials. And then crafting, obviously, is putting those materials together into something pretty cool. You have things such as the animal husbandry system, which has you breed mounts and pets. You have blacksmithing and weaponsmithing, creating all of these weapons and stuff. There is their shipbuilding and siege building tied into these professions somewhere. They're originally going to be standalone professions, but it sounds like they're going to be kind of scattered throughout various professions now. You're going to be able to make furniture for your houses, cooking, food, potions, all of that good stuff but you're only going to be able to master one of these trees, which is the cool thing. Not everybody is going to be able to set out and be a master weaponsmith and a master blacksmith and a master horse breeder or whatever you want to call it. You're only going to be able to do one and then you're gonna be able to dabble in some of the other ones. So that again is really gonna cause you as a player to rely on other people. It already does because as a crafter, you need the processors, as a processor, you need the gatherers. So it's gonna be a pretty cool and a pretty complex system to see Intrepid finally bring to the table. And one that I'm really excited for, we also know that there's some mini game-esque systems tied into crafting. Steven's really kind of talked about it, but not gone into detail on this in the past. It's kind of teased when we see the crafting UI, when there's a fast craft, which makes the weapon quickly and then there's another crafting button that we haven't seen actually function we have seen the fast crafting in the node showcase where steven created a sword but beyond that we haven't seen the complexity and what's going to make ashes of creation's artisan system stand out from above the rest if that's even the case it could have slight improvements on other systems it might not be this groundbreaking system but it's going to be a very crucial system to ashes of creation and the way the economy works and the way the caravans function and players trade and interact with each other and players stall within nodes and getting the resources you need for 
guild sieges and castle sieges and upgrading your ships as you set out on the open ocean to vary. There's, it's a huge part of the game and something that kind of like the nodes is going to have, it's going to tie in a little bit everywhere. What I want to see out of this though is not just the crafting side of thing, but I want to learn more about say, for example, with gathering, there's a whole land management system and I want to see this, I want to see how this is going to work in the game throughout the alpha testing and betas and what Intrepid really plans from this. For those of you who don't know, Intrepid has some land management system built into the game where you can gather resources and the more you gather, the less that kind of grows back, which is a very interesting take on it, which means players are going to have to somehow manage to work together to not completely wipe out resources on the map, especially those that you know you're going to need sooner or later, and you want them to be grown back rather quick. So it's going to, in a way, want players to want to spread out and gather materials from across the world instead of in one certain locations. But how Intrepid is going to advertise that to the players, being like, hey, you probably shouldn't touch those trees, they've been harvested a lot, is going to be quite an interesting take. And whether players actually listen to that or most of them probably just go chop down those trees anyways because they don't really care about some guilds land management system they just want to make a cool sword but beyond that i would love to see more of the professions we haven't seen i'm sure steven's going to keep this close to the chest and show us the simple things like blacksmithing or armor smithing and not the things like shipbuilding or siege building or animal husbandry or alchemy or anything like that although those are the things that i want to see i want to see something that stands out and is in your ordinary craft but I guess we will have to wait and see. Let me know, are you guys hyped to see the Artisan system functioning in the game on Thursday, November 30th? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, be sure to stay tuned for a lot more to come.